April 2nd. With that, we'll begin with NASA astronaut Tracy Caldwell Dyson, who will serve as the flight engineer for this long duration mission. Tracy was born in Arcadia, California, and holds degrees from California State University at Fullerton and University of California at Davis. She was selected by NASA in 1998 and has served numerous technical roles before her first mission. She flew as a mission specialist on STS-118 in August 2007. Among her tasks for that mission, Tracy served as MS-1, assisting the flight, direct, flight deck operations and performed robotic arm operations, and also served as the intravehicular crew member directing the mission's four spacewalks. Tracy accumulated more than 12 days of spaceflight experiment, experience. Tracy, we'll turn it over to you now to introduce your crew members. Thanks, Nicole. Thanks all for being here. It's indeed our pleasure to tell you about our mission and to answer any questions that you have. I'll start with uh, introducing ourselves and then uh, give you a brief overview describing the, our mission. To my right is uh, our Soyuz commander sitting in the center seat. This is Alexander Skvortsov. He's a colonel in the Russian Air Force. He has over 800 hours in high-performance aircraft, including MiG-23 and Su-27. And he is also a, a cosmonaut selected in the year of 1997. This will be his first space flight. And to his right is Mikhail Kornienko. And he, is, uh, he has a bit of an eclectic background, ranging from paratrooper to uh, an actual rocket scientist. He was uh, working to develop and test hardware related to EVAs on Mir and, uh, before being selected as a cosmonaut in 1998. This will also be his first mission to space. So I'll turn it to, to them to say a few words. Sasha. Ну и рад вас приветствовать. Спасибо большое за то, что пригласили на конференцию. И надеюсь, что она пройдет сегодня в хорошем деловом таком и дружественном настроении. I'm happy to greet you all here, and um, I want to thank you for um, inviting me to this press conference. I think that this will be a very good event, and we'll have a very good discussion today. Михаил. Хотел также поблагодарить вас за приглашение. Я думаю, что у нас будет интересный разговор. Я в этом уверен. Мы ждем ваших вопросов. Yes, I would also um, thank everybody for coming here today, and I think that we will have a very good discussion. I'll be very happy to answer any questions that you may have. And as Nicole said, I'm Tracy Caldwell Dyson. I'll be uh, accompanying them in the Soyuz uh, in the right seat and uh, looking forward to this mission. Uh, we have highlights um, of our mission uh, mainly focusing around vehicle traffic. During our mission, we'll see progress shuttles and Soyuz. Uh, we will have both a US, seg a U.S. stage EVA as well as a Russian stage EVA and a whole host of science experiments and ISS maintenance to perform. Our increment spans the months between April through September, starting with our launch April 2nd from Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. We'll dock to the space station two days later to join the Expedition 23 crew commanded by Oleg Kotov, TJ Kramer, and Suichi Noguchi. Not long uh, after we arrive and get settled in, we will undock Progress 35 to make way for Progress 37 to launch and dock in its place, carrying with it many supplies that we will spend uh, hours uh, transferring and putting in their place. The month of May is also going to be quite busy for us. Again, uh, Progress 35. Six will be undocking, and this is in preparation for uh, opening up ports on uh, the space station uh, for new modules to arrive. The 21S crew, Oleg and his crew, will relocate their Soyuz uh, shortly after that from the FGB to the aft end of the SM, and that is in preparation for the module that the shuttle crew will be bringing up, the Russian mini research module one named Rasvet. Shortly after, the, uh, shortly after that relocation, the crew of STS-132, ULF-4, commanded by Ken Ham, will be arriving, and their crew in their payload bay will be bringing this Russian module, the MRM-1. They'll be using the robotic arm to uh, take it out of the payload bay and attach it uh, in place to the FGB. And they also will be bringing up a number of spare parts, batteries, as well as uh, antennas uh, in their payload bay, and also equipment uh, related to uh, our stage EVAs um, to uh, assist us. 
they will stay docked for about eight days and, uh, and we will wave goodbye to them uh, towards the end of May. And at that time, our crewmates from Expedition 23 will uh, be prepared to come home. Oleg Kotov will then be handing over the command of the space station to Alexander and that will mark the end of Expedition 23 and the start of Expedition 24 as they ingress their Soyuz, undock and come home. The first two weeks of June we will spend as a three-person crew uh, starting off Expedition 24 with Alexander in command of the space station. Mid-month June, the crew of 23, Soyuz 23, which will be commanded by Fyodor Yurchikin, and in the center seat, left seat will be Shannon Walker and Doug Wheelock uh, will be in the right seat and they will come join us uh, on the 16th to become part of Expedition 24. Shortly after they arrive, after we give them a few weeks of adaptation, uh, we'll put them back into their Soyuz and they will relocate from the SM aft to the MRM-1 port and be the first to dock uh, on that port. And then shortly thereafter, toward the end of that month, we will then uh, launch Progress 38 and again with new supplies that will keep us busy with uh, transfer during those couple of weeks following the, the docking. The month of July is a rather exciting time for us as uh, increment crew as we look forward to both our U.S. segment EVA number 15 and our Russian segment EVA uh, number 25. The, con the main task of our U.S. EVA will be to install a PDGF, which is a grapple fixture for the robotic arm that will be installed on the top uh, port side of the FGB module, and that's for future robotic missions. The content of the Russian EVA will be, uh, one of the main tasks will be centered around installing cables for the new MRM module. And if there's any questions related to that, our um, spacewalker Michal uh, will be able to answer that. Spacewalkers for the U.S. EVA will be Doug Wheelock and myself, and will be supported uh, on orbit as IV, Shannon Walker, and from MCC, Oscar Kaler. On the Russian segment, EVA will have Mikhail Kornienko and also Fyodor Yurchikin as our spacewalkers. Rounding the end of July, we will see our second shuttle uh, guests arrive, STS-134 ULF-6, commanded by Mark Kelly. They'll be bringing with them a pallet full of spares as well, uh, ranging from high-pressure gas tanks to MMOD shields, as well as a, a few S-band antennas. But probably the most high-profile payload will be the AMS, the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer they'll use to, um, that uh, many scientists are involved uh, to detect cosmic rays in deep space. We'll have about a, a, a quiet period as far as vehicle traffic goes uh, after that for about a month until um, uh, the later part of August. And during that time, as well as all of the months uh, um, that we will be on station, we'll be busy, of course, doing, uh, utilizing the space station for the science it was designed. And, um, but I'm sure during that period of quiescence uh, from vehicle traffic that we will be uh, full force as a six-person crew uh, involved in science and be able to focus on that. Towards the end of August, we will undock Progress 38 to make room for our new Progress 39 that will launch shortly after that in dock. And by mid-September, we will uh, be packing up our things and uh, ingressing our Soyuz. Uh, Sasha Alexander will be handing over command of the space station then to Doug Wheelock, who will become the commander of Expedition 25. And uh, the undock of our Soyuz will mark the beginning of that expedition and uh, the conclusion of our increment 23-24. We will, uh, our scheduled uh, date of departure uh, currently coincides with the last, uh, uh, with the launch of the final shuttle mission, STS-133 ULF-5. And that, in a nutshell, is our increment 23-24. Uh, Thank you. Thank you so much, Tracy. That's a great overview. With that, we'll start questions here from the briefing room. If you'll just indicate if you have a question, we'll start on this side. Please state your name and affiliation. Uh, Jim Oberg with NBC News. I'm pretty up. And uh, I want to ask all three of you to describe it in your training in the past few in the past year. The Garen Kozlov Training Center in Moscow has switched to civilian control and left a lot of military uh, support. How has the change in the uh, management and the resources at the Gagarin Center affected your training? And how how, how 
how, how do you see them recovering and recovering their, their